then we got to talking and, and thought, why don't we do a workshop? Maybe we can help people avoid dementia. And so I was, I've always been impressed with Michelle because she did uh, not start out as a health coach. She started out with a degree in chemistry and working in corporate through, in chemistry. Can you believe that? And so she went from there. She decided she didn't like that. So she went to France and went to cooking school. And then she cooked for families and helped families have <coughs> good meals. So now she's gone into health and nutrition coaching and has her own business. And she'll tell you about that. And she'll tell you about her products. And believe it, I've lost about seven or eight pounds following her, her um, advice. And so that works too. You know, it's really interesting that when you find a program and you stick to it, it works. So I want you to give a warm welcome to Michelle today. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to tell you a tale about two women. The first one on the left is Kanuyo Sugiyama, and she happens to be my grandmother. She lived to 101 years old. She was mentally intact. She ha was healthy. Her body was extremely healthy. She was even gardening <coughs> into her 90s. She loved to eat fruits and vegetables and fish. And she had this mantra. And her mantra was health is number one. Health is number one. And she was very mindful about everything she did. She truly was. She was mindful about what she thought, how she moved, and what she ate. And really, I believe that we should all think of health is number one. Because we could be the richest, we could be the smartest, we could have tons of family and friends, but if we don't have our health, what's going to happen? We'll end up having nothing. Now the second lady on the right, she touched me dearly. She was my mother-in-law, Diane Fleming. And she died from Alzheimer's at age 72. She will never get to know her grandchildren or her great-grandchildren. She will never have relationships with families and friends. So Diane, she was a competitive tennis player until her 50s. So she was extremely active. As a matter of fact, she could beat women in their late 20s. But what she didn't do was really take care of her body from a food standpoint. She never ate practically any fruits and vegetables. The only thing she would eat was corn and beans, a good Midwestern girl. <laughs> ate a lot of meat, ate a lot of potatoes, did not eat any fish whatsoever. Zero fish, she couldn't stand it. And she was a sugarholic. <laughs> she would eat dessert at every meal, practically, and that was what she would choose to eat first. <laughs> so look at the difference between those two women. Now, Diane, she started getting symptoms of dementia about 10 years prior, so 60s, early 60s. Five years later, she was diagnosed with <coughs> mid-stage Alzheimer's. And what her doctor did was great. He said, yes, she has mid-stage Alzheimer's. And yes, she has about five years to live. So he gave us great information about what she had and how long she had to live. But what he couldn't do was help her. He couldn't stop the disease, and he couldn't save her at all. So when she died, she was in a home in New York. And at that time, her expenses were about 7,000 or more a month. So if she would have been a little bit more mindful about what she ate and maybe some other things, maybe it could have saved her family that expense and the, also the pain. Because it's so painful to see a relative, a friend, go through this horrific disease of not knowing who they are, of not knowing who you are, of not knowing their grandchildren. So Michaela, she is my seven and a half year old adopted daughter. And she is my inspiration. She is one of my inspirations. I'd say my grandmother is my really top inspiration. But she is the inspiration of 
what I do and why I do it. Because for one, my husband, Bob, he's got his mother who died of Alzheimer's at 72. He has a father that had a massive heart attack in his late 50s and had to have quintuple bypass, wow. which is the most bypasses you can get. So I need to keep us healthy for Michaela, right? As she gets older into high school, into college, maybe gets married, has children, we need to stay healthy and energetic for her. So when she hopefully has grandchildren, I really want to be around and play with them, right? I want to get down on the floor. I want to play with those babies. But the trick is, is to get back up the floor, up off the floor, right? <laughs> so now, do you have a Michaela? Okay, it doesn't necessarily have to be a daughter, all right, or a son, or even a relative. It could be your best friend. It could be an aging parent. It could be an aunt and uncle. We need to stay healthy for our, us, for ourselves, and for them. All right. So look at two people. Look at two people in the room. <laughs> One out of three will get Alzheimer's. One out of three. It's a staggering percentage. Okay. Now, if it's a lot of people are like, it's not going to be me. I'm not the one that's going to get it. But if you're not the one that's going to get it, what are you going to become? A caregiver, right? If it's not you. And somehow you are going to be affected by Alzheimer's in some way. So the lineup for today, food for the brain and overall health. I'm going to talk about a really important skill and also healthy, mate, healthy eating made easy. Because really what I like to do is give people simple tools and strategies that they can implement right away. As soon as you walk out that door, you will have things that you can do to implement it in your life, and it's going to be easy. So did you know that we are all fatheads? <laughs> I'm a fathead. Joan's a fathead. Dr. Medine is a fathead. We are all fatheads. And do you know why? Because our brains are made of 60% fat, all right? And 25% of that 60% is DHA omega-3 acid, okay? So if you are ever called a fathead, say thank you very much. Yes, I am. I'm the biggest one around. So research shows that people with high blood levels of DHA have really good cognitive abilities. So when you are needing some boost in the brain, right, go ahead and pump up on those omega-3 foods, and I'll talk about that. So we need a right fat diet, not a <coughs> no fat diet. And Dr. Medina talked about that. So do you guys remember back in the 80s when it was like, no fat? Zero fat, snack wells days. I remember those days, and I'm probably dating myself because of that. But I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even want to have oil in my salad dressing because I didn't want that fat, all right? And so what I was doing was I was prohibiting those oil-soluble vitamins and antioxidants from that salad to get in my body because I wasn't eating any oil with it, all right? And then the snack wells cookies, oh my gosh. I was eating those like crazy because they were healthy. They didn't have any fat, but what were they full of? Sugar. Sugar and processed flour, right? So omega-3s in seafood because everybody says, oh, eat a lot of wild salmon, wild salmon. Yeah, wild salmon is a fantastic source, but if you eat just seafood in general, you will be getting omega-3s in your body. So if you go from the left to the right, that these are the fishes and the um, shellfish that have lower amounts, and as you progress to the right, these are the fishes that have the higher amounts. So it's the cold water fatty fishes. And if you want um, a simple acronym, just remember SMASH, S-M-A-S-H, SMASH, SMASH fishes. So that would be the sardine, the mackerel, the anchovy, which is not on here, uh, the salmon, and the herring. That's a really simple way when you're at the grocery, 
grocery store, think about smash fishes. So a healthy salmon salad I have prepared for you today. And it has some wild salmon in it. And it is canned. I do get it at Costco, and I gave you a little picture there. It's the Kirkland brand. Um, and you can lighten it up by using some Greek yogurt if you don't have an, a, doubt, a dairy issue. Okay, because a lot of people think, oh, you know, salmon salad or chicken salad or tuna salad is very heavy because of the mayonnaise. So you can lighten that up if you want to with some um, really good quality Greek yogurt. And the recipe is on my blog, but it's super simple. Um, you just do pump up the flavor with a lot of dried dill or fresh dill. Uh, there's some organic uh, pickle relish in there um, and some onions, a little bit of celery. Um, and you can also put some fresh lemon juice, so pump a little bit of the vitamin C up with that. So later on, if you want to come and try that, it's over here on the table. Plant sources, if you don't want to eat fish or if you don't want to take fish oil, there is omega-3 in plants. So hemp, chia, flax, sesame, and even Brussels sprouts. Who loves Brussels sprouts? <laughs> no? I love yeah. them. And one of my most favorite ways is to roast them. So I, top, I cut them in half. I toss them in avocado <coughs> oil. And I put them on a sheet in a very high heat. And um, it's great. It's like candy to me. I love it. Just made it the other day. And as a matter of fact, my seven-year-old, she loves roasted Brussels sprouts. Um, and so my path towards wellness has really helped her, OK? Her mother was um, a drug abuser. She has a very poor family history. There's a lot of heart issues. There's a lot of mental problems. And so I really want her to grow up to have, you know, optimum health. And I, so I think my path is helping her because she has not been sick now since preschool. So um, since four years old, which is amazing to go through preschool, kindergarten, first grade, and not have to go to the doctor at all for any type of illness. So this is a supplement that is a blend of omegas, and it is all vegan. There is no fish in there, so you will not get the fishy burps. I know a lot of people do not like to take salmon oil supplements because of the fish burps, and they're huge. They're really, really big pills. Yeah, so this is an option for you. It's extremely reasonable. It's all very clean. Um, so I have, I don't really have a lot of information on that, but it is an option. Nuts. Anybody love nuts? Nuts and seeds? Yeah? All right. Well, if you are what you eat, I am definitely a nut. <laughs> Seriously. And I'm sure a couple of people in this room would say that, yes, she is correct. She is a nut. <laughs> I um, have some form of nut every single day. Okay? It could be walnuts. It could be pistachios, macadamia nuts. It could be a nut butter, like almond butter or sesame seed butter. But some t somehow, some way, I do have some form of nut in, um, in my food every single day. So now that it's cold, um, I really gravitate to rolled organic oatmeal in the morning. And one of the yummy things I like to do is put some nut butter in there. It makes the oatmeal nice and creamy and comforting. And I also add a lot of ground cinnamon in there mm. because cinnamon is an awesome anti-inflammatory. And as Dr. Medina did mention, inflammation is the root cause of just about every single chronic disease. And we can completely control that, okay? Not all the time, like with our air that we're breathing, especially right now, right? Um, but we can control that with our diet and what we're drinking as well, what we're eating and what we're drinking. So getting back to the nuts. All right, I went to see Dr. Andrew Weil about, whoa, probably like 15 or 20 years ago. Do you guys know Dr. Andrew oh, yeah. Weil? Yeah, he's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. So what he said is if we all ate a handful of nuts a day, we would be a lot healthier, all right? But then he went on to say what I'm not saying is eat two or three or four handfuls because it is fairly caloric and high in fat. But the good news is that nuts and seeds contain healthy fat. So if you notice, total fat in just two tablespoons is, yeah, 
15 to 17 grams, but look at how many grams is the monounsaturated fat. That's a healthy fat. That's the fat that's going to boost your HDL, okay, which is the so-called good cholesterol, and then lower your LDL, which is the artery clogging cholesterol, okay? Excellent amount of fiber and protein as well. So it's a, just a really good all-around food. An extremely important skill. All right, who reads food labels? Sometimes. Sometimes, okay, well at least you're reading some, right? Now back when I started lecturing, back in 2004, I would ask that question, and practically nobody would raise their hand. Yeah, so I'm so happy to see more and more people are reading food labels. So what do you think is the most important part of the food label? Yes? Ingredients. Yes, exactly. I was going to say it's not even on this slide. Okay, I wanted to show this slide because primarily I want you guys to look at where it says trans fat. You see where it says trans fat? I thought trans fats were illegal in California. No, they're still around. They're still around. They get yep. a, certain, a certain amount, right? Right. So when, and if you look on the note part, it says if the ingredients include the term partially hydrogenated, okay, it can have up to 0.5 grams per serving and the food company can put zero on trans fat, okay. So that's why reading the ingredient list is the most important part because if the label says zero trans fat and then you look at the ingredients list and it says partially hydrogenated fat on that, that means that there is trans fat in there and that's the un really, really unhealthy fat. That's a fat that's going to clog your arteries up. Okay, so read it. It's the most important part of the food level. Top three things to avoid. You might want to take a note of this. High fructose corn syrup. Trans fats. And also artificial flavors and colors. <laughs> There's a lot of our artificial flavors and colors in our food. And why? Because they're toxins. They're toxins for our brain and our body. Mm -hmm. All right, who ate some Halloween candy this year? Halloween candy. Good. I'm so glad. <laughs> so my seven and a half year old comes home with this huge bag of Halloween candy. And most of it contains really bad toxic ingredients including artificial colors, mm -hmm. all right? So all the, the, the colors with the numbers on it, right? Um, and that's something we definitely don't want to include in our diet. And actually, Dr. Medino sent me a slide about a scientist who is now linking artificial colors, right, with ADHD. Uh, or autoimmune, sorry, autoimmune disease, yes. So some other things that you might want to avoid is things that you can't pronounce. Yeah. So ask yourself if your grandma could pronounce that ingredient. If, if you say no, then it's probably not a good package to, to buy. Right? MSG, there's a ton of names for MSG. I actually have an MSG intolerance. Um, multiple names that end in O-S-E because it's just a lot of different names for sugar. And that's one of the other ways how the food industry can trick you. So because we all are getting smarter, right? We all know that the first ingredient on the ingredient list is what it contains the most of, right? Right. So if they put sugar on there, you're going to say, oh my gosh, this thing is just loaded with sugar. But if they have multiple names for it, sugar is going to be all split up within the ingredients list. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So pesticides. And in my business card, I've given you the 2018 list of the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. So on the left is the Dirty Dozen, so if you guys have my business card, I gave it to you, um, you will find the list of ingredients that are highest in pesticides. So this is where you want to spend a little bit more money and buy organic ingredients. All right? So those lists change from time to they time? They do change every year. Huh. So every year they come out with a new list. A lot of times it's the same ingredients, but they're in different order. Okay? But really, strawberries and, and uh, berries and spinach are always kind of at the top. So the order that it's in is the, it's the order. Number one is the worst. It's the worst. Oh, gotcha. In 2018. Yeah. Yes. Spinach. Yes. Peaches. 
Yes. And it's not always necessarily the thickness of the skin. It's whether or not the bugs like them. So asparagus, for example, doesn't have like super thick skin, but the bugs really don't like them. So if we bought organic strawberries, yeah. uh, would they still be the... They would be the better choice because they wouldn't be high in pesticides, yes. Exactly. So the list on the right is going to be the clean foods, the clean fruits and vegetables with the least amount of pesticides. So this is where you can save a little bit more money if you'd like, if you don't want to buy organic. All right. So you can just flip this around. You don't have to look at my picture. <laughs> just in your wallet. And then when you're at the grocery store. Yeah, we, we need some more of those, please. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to play a really fun game. I don't have a lot of time. Um, so I just wanted to put a little more humor in here. But um, I want to see if you guys can guess what this food is with the with this um, ingredients list. Can you read it back there? Yeah. Good job. Oh, so we'll give people a little bit more time. <laughs> Sorry. Yogurt? No, yogurt. <laughs> so it's obviously a milk product. It's got a thickener in there, some other stuff. We've got some uh, unnatural ingredients. We've got sucralose, which is an artificial sweetener. We've got red dye number 40, and then we've got some uh, cultures in there. So that was probably your giveaway, right? Yogurt. Yeah, so yes, it is Yoplait light strawberry yogurt. And the food company is touting that as a health food, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, second one, really quick. So it's got flour as the top ingredient, and then we, we come down here, and we've got some other nasty mm -hmm. stuff you can't probably pronounce very well, and then we've got some dyes. She's like macaroni. <laughs> So yeah, easy mac and cheese. And what is some favorite foods of some kids? Usually mac and cheese is right up there, right? Mac and cheese, hot dogs, and pizza. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like the top three, right? For kids and maybe adults too. <laughs> so you know, if you're a mac and cheese lover, if you're a macaroni and cheese lover, then maybe make your own. Okay, invest some time and make some on your own. All right, healthy eating made easy. These are going to be a couple tips. You can take home right away. Ten fistfuls of fruits and vegetables every single day. All right. Um, I had a conversation earlier. What is one of my top tips? And it's plants. Let's try and eat good, clean, whole plants. All right. I was trained under a very prestigious medical doctor. His name is Dr. William Sears. He actually wrote the baby book and about 40 other books, like the breastfeeding book. Um, and now he is um, trying to get everybody healthy, all generations. Okay, and his top tip is 10 fistfuls of fruits and vegetables every single day. And why is that? Anybody because know you why? Need it? Because it cleans out your system? It's the most natural way to detox, all right, is fruits and vegetables and clean water. Now, what we need is we need all of those plant and um, plant chemicals, so they're called phytochemicals. <coughs> They all work together in your body in synergy, okay? Synergy means work together, all right? So an apple, for example. One apple contains 10,000 plant chemicals, phytochemicals, and they all work together for cellular health and healing. So healing and health at every single cellular level, okay? Because we're made out of just a bunch of cells, right? Okay? And we need to keep our cells healthy and protect them. So how we do that is all of the antioxidants, which are the colors from the fruit and vegetables and all the other vitamins and minerals in there. All right, so let's think about whole, clean food, okay? Are apples any good without the skin? They are. I mean, you're gonna get definitely some attributes from the, you know, the, the flesh, of, or the, the, yeah, the inside. But you really wanna eat the skin too. Yeah. yeah. And you only wanna buy organic apples. Okay, so the 5S diet, super simple way to think about uh, eating healthy, all right? So they all start with S's. So smoothies, awesome, excellent way to get tons of fruits and vegetables in your body and your, your um, digestive system does not have to work hard. Why? Because it's already ground up. Okay, salads, another great way to get a lot of fruits and vegetables in there. Seafood, of course, I talked about earlier. Now this is for spices, this is roasted cauliflower, which is another one of my absolute favorites and Michaela's favorites too. I love to um, sprinkle turmeric on there. 
which is an excellent anti-inflammatory, just like cinnamon. You can do curry and turmeric at the same time if you want a little bit more heat from the curry. And then supplements. Who takes supplements now? Okay. Yeah, supplements are a great way to fill in the gaps, right? We take uh, vitamins, we take other kinds of things, but really it's important that we focus on whole food supplements, okay? Because when you're taking an isolated, and yes, they are man-made vitamin, they are man-made, they're not natural, okay? What are you missing? What are you missing when you're taking an isolated man-made vitamin? You're missing all the antioxidants. You're missing the 10,000 other plant chemicals from whole food, okay? So when I heard about Juice Plus about four years ago, I um, was just a client. I was a little bit skeptical. Um, and then a year later, I'm, I was completely on board. Because what it is, it's just whole fruits and vegetables. They take the entire plant, the skin, and the seeds, and they pulp it. Okay, it's just not juiced. They pulp everything. And a lot of those vitamins and minerals are in the skin and the seeds. So an orange, for example, most of the vitamin C is in the skin. Okay, how often do we eat the rind of an orange? Not too often. <laughs> we might, you know, do a little bit of this, right, every once in a while, but we really never eat that, right? Um, even pomegranates. A lot of the good stuff in, is in the rind of a pomegranate. And that is so tough, you're never going to eat the rind of a pomegranate, right? Okay, so uh, what I love about it is when it's all clean, all clean, all right? There's no GMO, okay? It's third party certified, certified by a completely different party that says there are, um, that it is clean, okay? That it is clean. All the farms are small to medium sized farms. So there's no big, large conglomerates. So they can really watch um, how they're grown. They pick them at peak ripeness, and that's where the uh, good phytochemicals are produced, is at that peak ripeness, okay? So once they pick it from peak, peak ripeness to the processing to make the, the powder, it's about six hours. So right now, if you go and you buy fruits and vegetables at the store, what do you find a lot of times? You find green fruits and vegetables, right? They haven't been allowed to ripen on the vine. And that's really important, very important. Um, so I brought some of the capsules, because it's just concentrated fruit powder, fruit and vegetable powder that they put in capsules where they process it more to make gummies for people who can't take capsules or for children. And that is, I believe, one of the reasons why my daughter has not been to the doctor for four years, because she's been on the gummies now for almost four years. All right, so what I also love being a former chemist is that there are 36 clinical studies at major universities. Okay, I'm not talking little dinky universities, I'm talking like Yale, UCLA, University of Texas, University of Florida, even major universities across the pond in, um, in Europe and also in Australia. Um, so nine of those studies support heart health because what's good for the heart is good for the brain. And what's good for the brain is good for the eyes. You know why? Because our eyes are just an ex extension of our brain through the optic nerve, all right? 16 of those studies, it increases the antioxidants in the bloodstream, all right? So what does that prove? It proves that these fruit and vegetable powders, the antioxidants, get in your body and do good things. Now, other supplements, they don't have these kind of studies. You don't even know if it's getting absorbed in your body, all right? And then five of the studies show that Juice Plus reduces inflammation. And what did Dr. Medina say again? It's about inflammation, right? We really need to reduce inflammation. So super tips for today, a recap, is a right fat diet, okay? Smash fishes, and a handful of nuts a day will keep the doctor away, okay? Avoid toxic food. So we have the top three, right? And some additional ones. The 5S eating plan. Who can remember what the 5S eating plan is? Um, smoothies, 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 supplements, 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 seafood. This was a little brain test that actually Dr. Medina was going to do earlier. <laughs> this is gonna, that's going to test your memory. Smoothies, smoothies, smoothies yes. salad. Okay, and then whole food supplements. All right. So um, please definitely think about that. Come get some information. Um, about the whole food supplements.
So really, it's all about taking action, right? We're all so busy. How many times have you gone to a class or seminar, you felt like you've got good information, you're writing uh, mental, you're taking mental notes, you're writing notes, and you walk out the door, mm -hmm. and then what happens? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, right? So think about what you're going to do now to increase your brain and overall health. Okay, so going back to that, you know, is there anything out of those four things that you're going to try to implement now? Anybody? Yes? Um, I think that the first thing I would do is to change what I buy um, and, and to rather buy, you know, organic, like Costco has a whole organic section, you know, of organic fruits and vegetables. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's probably where I would start. I, I, I was really interested to n know also what, you know, what your views are about the kinds of protein that we eat, you know, in addition to fish. Um, because I didn't know whether meat is is counterindicative or whether that's inflammatory. I'd really be interested in your views about that, and also things like tofu or, you know, uh, what 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 are your views about that? Um, let's take one more thing about what somebody's going to do. Okay, so we'll talk about that, and then we can we can we can ask some questions depending on the time. Okay. What else is somebody going to do like right away? There was another hand that went up. Yes. I used to make smoothies uh, with my Nutribullet, and that worked really well. I had a good habit of that in the morning, and then I moved to a place where there was no working fridge, and I think it just kind of fell off the wagon. But now I got a mini fridge, so I'm going to start uh, implementing that again. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yep, I make smoothies a lot. Michaela loves smoothies, actually. Mm -hmm. She will drink, um, and she's not afraid of green food. So really, if you have um, any young children in your life, any grandkids, any nieces and nephews, it's all about shaping their taste buds, all right? Getting them used to healthy foods right away. So it's it's not something that they're um, like talk to the hand, right? So Michaela will actually help me make smoothies. She will put the spinach in there for me. She'll put kale in there for me. She's not. Um, at all worried about having green things in her eggs because I put spinach in her eggs. Um, I heard uh, too much kale. Uh, yeah, I heard the same thing too. You know, I think too much of anything is not a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Because it, it was a lot. I was having uh, kale smoothies uh, like every day, yeah. and so I got concerned. Yeah. So I think you know we need to like really, you know, eat a variety. So once again, ten handfuls, but a variety. You want a rainbow of color. I know you've heard that a million times. It's totally cliche, right? A rainbow of color is great. So, um, and I will answer your question too. But really quick, what I want to do is I did not, I usually do a raffle, but I did not bring my raffle slips. I apologize. <laughs> but um, we can still hold one if you want to. Um, I just need you to, you know, fill out a little piece of paper and we'll throw it somewhere. But also what I, I want to tell you is that, um, that's an hour. So the raffle is for an hour, one-on-one, uh, -on, -one, on the phone or on Zoom. And you will, believe me, you will get tips that are specifically for you, okay? Things that I can do to help you, not the general pu public. Um, and that's about also the complimentary Vitality Upgrade that you can sign, uh, put your name and your phone number on here. Well, I probably have your phone or your email too. Um, where you can just get 15 minutes with me. Okay, and I mean, do you feel like you got value today? Yeah. Okay, so do you feel like that you could get more value? All right, if you feel that way and you want 15 minutes with me, please sign your name and find a time that works for you. If there's not a time that works for you, then we can, I can connect with you and we can find a time that works for you. Okay, so I'm going to start passing this around right here. Okay, raffle tickets here. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> So put your name and your phone number on the back. Um, and then also let me know on the raffle ticket if you're interested in more information on the Juice Plus or what your what your what your interest is. Do you want to be with you? Um, so anyway, let me just answer your question really fast. Okay, one of them was protein. It's protein, right? Yes. So um, all animal products 
it, in general, are inflammatory. Okay, all animal products are inflammatory. Uh, we need to eat very good, high quality animal products when we choose animal products. Okay. Right. So when we do eat salmon, you want this? when we do eat salmon, we want to choose and yeah, spend a little bit more money for the wild salmon. Okay. I know a lot of times it's about what's coming out of your wallet, right? When you're at the grocery store. Oh my gosh, should I spend another, you know, 50 cents for this Oops. for organic versus conventional? Well, you know that 50 cents that you're spending is going to save you thousands later. It's all, it, you know, it's, it's about paying the piper, right? So would you rather spend a little bit more money now, or would you rather spend $8,500 a month on, on uh, care, right? And, and, and for, a, for, a, for a home for all of people. Yeah, you know, I'd rather spend the 50 cents now, but a good quality food. It's about, it's about quality and not quantity, right? Thank you. Um, anybody in there? Well, one did get one? I'm not, like, available. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. We can find you. Just put your name down. We'll find you. Okay. Everybody yeah. get one? Uh, yeah. I eat out almost all the time. And okay. I try to get a lot of salmon. Mm -hmm. uh, I eat as well as meat and lettuce. And on the menu it says, responsibly farm raised salmon. I'm sure that's not as good as the real deal, but is it still um, beneficial to you? So it depends on what the fish is. Like if you go to the Monterey Bay Aquarium um, website where it has, you know, the, the, the it's kind of like the dirty dozen, like the top fishes that you want to focus on, right? Um, that's, you might want to download that app or you just might want to get, I actually I think I have one in my car. Oh no, I took it out. But anyway, um, you can easily find the good fishes versus the not so good fishes. Um, since you eat out a lot, I would strongly recommend that you think about sodium. Because when, the more you eat out, there's just it's loaded with sodium, okay. And then just think about whether or not it's um, you know um, heavily processed white flour and things like that. Okay? I kind of keep an eye on that, so yeah. Okay, yeah, great. Um, I would choose wild over farmed. Oh sure. Day. It's hard yeah. to find in a restaurant, really. Though. Yeah, there are far there are some farm fishes now that are farm responsible. Okay. Um, like tilapia, for example, they say tilapia now is farm responsible. Responsible. I don't know, I can't even say it. But anyway, yeah. All right. So, okay. Yeah, Congrats I'll be here. here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank So just wait a minute. Okay. Just wait a minute. Okay. I'm going to have, um, oh. Well, no, no, because then she won't have a ticket. So just take a ticket out of there. Oh. Uh, Dr. Medina's going to pick it. I'm not going to pick it. But then be sure and get to oh, have that. Oh, wait. Did you already have your number? Did you already have one side? She put them in. Okay, wow. um, Michelle, could we um, we'll close the meeting yeah. and do the drawing, yeah, yeah. please? Okay. Okay. So uh, let me make just don't, uh, just wait a, a couple of suggestions. Uh, the raffle will all turn out wonderfully well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is a divine message about who will win. Yes, divine message. Okay. If you would like information about the church, Corky is available.